Hello, my name is Olaf Skoog. I am the European Union's ambassador to the UN here in New York. This is EU Talks. The goal of the UN is to improve the daily lives of citizens around the world. But the UN is a complicated place. In the EU Talk series, we will openly discuss the UN's work and how it delivers. Every month, EU Talks will engage with diplomats, UN officials, but also with experts, journalists, activists, creating what I hope will be a valuable space, especially for young people. Hello everyone, welcome back to a new episode of EU Talks. I'm here today with uh, Lucia and with Nadja, two of our uh, brilliant uh, and new uh, EU youth delegates. We're very proud of this new program, which will enable two brilliant persons to be part of the EU delegation for a couple of three or four weeks uh, every year. It's a new program and uh, maybe Lucia and Nadja, if you want to introduce yourself and see, uh, tell us a little bit on how you ended up here. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, so my name is Nadia and I used to be a Danish youth delegate for, for climate and environment. Uh, and that is also how I, I ended up here, uh, so to say. So the Danish Youth Council, they nominated me to, to be a youth delegate uh, for the EU. Uh, when they saw a, a posting and then I was like, wow, this is interesting. And, you know, fingers crossed and applied and then I ended up here. Yeah, I was in previous year, I was the youth delegate of Slovenia to the UN. Uh, so I was actually also here uh, kind of talking through the idea of the EU Youth Delegate Program. Um, and after I finished my mandate, also our National Youth Council uh, nominated me for this position. So it is very interesting also to see the comparisons between the National Youth Delegate Program and the European one. It's great to have you. I'm very glad and impressed by how you made it all the way here because I understand that you've gone through a much more thorough process in reaching where you are now than I ever did or most of the colleagues here. So you come in with a very strong democratic uh, constituency behind you. So um, uh, tell me a little bit about what you hope to achieve. What is, could you be your contribution, you think, to the work we do here? I hope to empower even more young people to be engaged in the UN. I, I fear that sometimes the UN becomes quite unrelatable for people. And for me, it's really important that we get y more young people from European countries and beyond to see how important the UN actually is. And I think that in this regard, it's important that we who are engaged in the UN speak in another language, uh, which is more uh, as everyday language. Um, I think that is really important. But uh, for my priorities down here, then of course, I, I hope to represent European youth as, as well as, as possible. Um, and especially I would focus on, on climate um, and, and really pushing that agenda because that is something that I see as, as something that is important for European youth. For me, one of the things I want to achieve is um, just some more unity between the youth delegates because in Europe, there's almost all European countries actually have the program. And it's a program that's been running for 40 years, I think, last year. Um, so I think it's also important seeing that EU is one of the biggest actors in the United Nations. That it is also nice that this reflects to the, uh, to the youth delegates so we can also work together as a common voice, still our own national countries' voices, but also as a common European voice and have this current nation among us. As for my personal priorities here, um, I, I am very interested and have a background in educational policies. Uh, so for me, it is very important uh, to fight for education, so not just in European Union, but also worldwide. So everyone has the access uh, for free and quality education. And also that um, educational system become a bit, a bit less rigid, so they are more adaptable to the current challenges. Uh, so either connecting with Nadia's priorities on environment and climate, um, and of course, one of our common priorities, that we, which is a very big one, especially since we're young women, um, is of course gender equality and women's rights. Um, because I think that also the, pre the last year and current happenings in the world has shown that we are taking some of this for granted and we are very privileged to enjoy the rights as women we are. Thanks for, um, for describing what your priorities are. You know, there are many people here uh, who would argue that the UN is an organization for governments and for you know, the representatives of governments, but I, I and the EU really think that uh, you know, for the UN to be relevant, it has to open up much more for youth, for women, for 
private sector, for academia, etc. So that's another, you know, there's a political reason why we have you here, you know, to allow for that uh, inclusion in a much better way and to ensure that we become better mm -hmm. in representing the issues that you spoke about with the perspective of, uh, that you come with, you know, the, having the youth perspective in, in everything we do here to make sure that our policies are also future proof, that they are something that, uh, you know, the next generation, you as future and current leaders will find uh, is uh, comfortable with. So, um, but you know, the EU talk series is very much about t talking, you know, re real, you know, insisting and putting demands on those who have power. Now you have a power uh, by being part of our delegation here. So tell me a little bit about how you ideally would want to be you know, received and, and how you would like to use the weeks that you will spend with us here. Yeah, I think it's really important for us to be included in, in thematics of things. Um, far too often we see that young people are mainly involved when the topics are related to, to youth uh, specifically. And we think that is quite problematic because young people do not only care about ourselves, we care about the climate, we care about education, we care about women's rights and therefore we really want to be engaged in all those things. Uh, and then I really hope that it's also possible for us to, to engage a lot with, with young people because that is really our mandate to be here. And to be honest, if I was only here as, as myself, I wouldn't dare to give a statement because, you know, I'm just a person. Um, but now that I know that I represent so many people, that is really what makes me dare to speak up. Yeah, I think I second what Nadia said, and I think it's we really want to be perceived here, you know, as a part of delegation, as you know, the youth, not only the youth section of the delegation, uh, but just someone who is very who can contribute greatly to the delegation and everything that you do. As Nadia said, we do not want to talk only about the youth topics, but um, nowadays, I mean, you can see that all the NGOs and all the activist movements they're addressing real world problems and sometimes even have much better solutions to them than, you know, national governments. Um, so I think that is what we bring a lot to the table. Uh, but of course, you can also give a lot to us and encourage us and also empower us, you know, to when we're older, we can run the, we can um, not run the system. <laughs> When we're older, um, that we understand how everything goes and we can also empower future uh, generations. But I think sometimes it's an advantage that we don't know that much about the system because I feel like if you've been in the system for so long, you would think, okay, we tried that 10 years ago, but we wouldn't know. Of course, we were born 10 years ago, but you know, still we, we, didn't, we were not engaged at that point. And I think having that outside perspective and not knowing as much as you guys is sometimes an advantage because that enables you to dare to say some things that you would probably not be able to say. Uh, and then I think it's also really important to acknowledge us young people as catalyst for action. I think far too often we see that UN systems may be good at like setting goals and agreeing on, okay, we need to, you know, have sustainability, but you know, how do we actually get those goals to be tangible, concrete changes in people's everyday life? And I think young people are really good at that. We see that, you know, with the climate movement, really making a change all over Europe and in the world. Uh, and really that acknowledgement of, of young people's role in actually making a change is, is something I hope for. It's very encouraging to hear you uh, speak, I, I think, you know, because um, it's true that the world now is really confronted with some very serious challenges. I mean, you spoke about um, uh, the climate change issue, the biodiversity loss, etc. You speak, Lucia, about the, the educational uh, problems we have of so many children that are actually do not go to school, that uh, they will not be able to cope with the future with, because there's no education, there's nothing. Uh, and I also like your uh, attitude about, you know, let's change all these commitments that have been made politically into action. And it's very timely because we have some very important meetings coming up, the COP27 on, on climate uh, in, in Sharm el-Sheikh in Egypt uh, later on this year, on education, we just had this Transforming Education Summit. Again, leaders come together, they all agree that this is huge problems, we need to work together, etc. But what is sometimes missing, I think, is a little bit the follow-up, the implementation of all this. You know, how do we turn those commitments into political uh, and action-oriented, you know, um, put money and, and, and uh, projects on the ground. So I hope you will, uh, and I really appreciate you coming in with this gung-ho attitude, you know, let's, let's get things done. Uh, so I want to ask you, you've been here basically one day already, and you, but you, it was a very busy day yesterday. Do you have any impressions from that first day? 
Well, it was it was a long day for us, um, and we went straight into action. We literally met like, um, yesterday in the morning, and an hour after that, we were already having our statement um, at the third committee, uh, which was definitely an interesting experience. Uh, we've received some interesting feedback also on the statement, um, and after that, we have also uh, met with other youth delegates. Uh, we had a reception in the evening, so we met everyone, and of course, in the morning, we also had a meeting with the ambassador. Um, and I think that went great because we're clearly, I think, on the same page regarding how we want this EU program to look like, which is also a big encouragement for us that we're not here looking for something we're not going to find, but that entire EU delegation is welcoming us and supporting our vision also for the program. Yeah, and I think it was really good that we got the opportunity to deliver the statement. And even though it was a quite hard start just arriving, being jet lagged and then having to give the statement at first, uh, then it really enabled us to, to tell our priorities uh, and we concretely focused on the rule of like getting more gender equality and getting more climate ambitions and talking about energy security and food, uh, which is really uh, agendas that is important for young people. So that was really great that we got that opportunity and, and we hope to get even more opportunities like that. And maybe also just to add, um, I think it's so important also our statement yesterday. I mean, we have to acknowledge that it was the first statement from European youth on behalf of European youth, pretty much probably ever in the history of EU at the United Nations. So also our statement, of course, didn't reflect just our personal opinions, uh, but we had a consultation with other youth delegates. They put their inputs. So it was actually a reflection of the youth in Europe and some of the countries. And I think that is very important. I think it's a very big milestone for the project, but also for the EU delegation, hopefully, here. Excellent. No, I think, and this statement is available, I think, on our websites, etc. and you will make every, th every effort possible to make sure that everyone in your uh, constituency reads this statement. You know, we've had many conversations with youth in the past, and usually one single thing that they all agree is, is the highest priority is to be more involved. Right? So now we're involving you. So now we really want you to also con contribute you know, in substance. You know, how can we do better on education, on climate, on, on biodiversity, etc., and, and on every other issue that you find is important. So thanks again for being here. Look forward to working with you and feel completely included in this delegation. This was another episode of EU Talks this day with uh, Nadja and Lucia, who are our pioneering EU youth delegates. <music> Thank you.